Howdy folks, and in this quick tip, I am going to build a model test setup so we can try out our Houdini designer textures on a variety of models. It's going to be fairly simple to build, but what I found was I was bouncing over and back between sops and lops a lot to try and get things to line up. So this is the setup that I came up with, which should hopefully cut down on the round tripping and allow us to concentrate on our look dev. So what I'm going to do is create a button up here on my shelf. So I've created a custom shelf, so you can go and click on the little plus here and say new shelf, and you can give it a name. Um, I would recommend giving it a name starting with the letter A, so that it is at the very top of this list. And in my case, I have some other buttons that I've created previously. So we're gonna store a button up here for our model test setup. So hit tab and type geo, and let's dive in here. We're gonna put down a grade, and we're going to put down a UV project, because we will need some UVs and we'll put down a UV transform and we'll put down a transform underneath that and a subdivide. So let's go back and adjust some of these settings now. So really the issue, part of the issue is, is that we use height fields and height fields are really big and our models are really small. So we have to move around one or the other. Uh, in my case here, I've just got a grid. I've got a 10 by 10. I've relative referenced these already and 10 by 10 in rows. On my UV project, I can just initialize and it will project some UVs from the top. Now on the UV transform here, I would like to keep the scale proportional most of the time. So I am going to relative reference into the Y here. And I guess I can just copy and paste that into the, uh, the Z as well, or the UVW I should say. Um, so, and on this particular one, I'm gonna leave it at one. Then for, for the transform lid here, I'm going to scale it up to be about 3.5. And then for the subdivide node, I'll just put it to 2 for the moment. So that's the first one set up. Let's plug that into a switch. Oh, just on the transform here, I want to move the grid up so it aligns roughly to the top of a box, which I'm about to create. I'm going to move that up by 6, give or take. Now, the next setup is going to be that box. So let's put down the box and I'm going to put down a UV unwrap for the box. And that is going to give me box mapping by default. So it will give me six planes. Uh, I'm going to put a UV transform under that. Now on this UV transform, I'm going to set the scale to three. I will put a transform node down underneath this. And on the transform node, I'm going to change the uniform scale to 20. And then I will put a subdivide underneath that. And on the subdivide here, I will put it to a depth of two. I'm going to turn on creases and I'll put the crease weight to one. That will give me a softer edge to the box. Here, um, I will go back to my original box here and I'm gonna set the divisions to 10 by 10 by 10. It's just so I get a kind of a beveled edge to my box. So that's the box set up. I'm just gonna plug that into the switch here. Now, I also want to be able to project my textures onto a sphere. So for the sphere, I'm just gonna copy this entire little setup here and and I'm going to subdivide the box to turn it into a sphere. So if we go back to our box here and set the axis divisions to two by two by two, and let's put a subdivide just here after the UV unwrap. Uh, let's zoom in here, and that's what we get at default. So let's put this up to four. And now we've got a box that we've turned into a sphere. And the reason that we're doing this is that we will get more consistent UVs at the poles. Otherwise we'll get stretching at the poles if we use a normal sphere. On the UV transform here, I will set this to be 3.5. We get scaled up by 20, and I think I move this one up. I move this up two units just to get it to line up with everything else. I don't need this extra subdivide, and let's plug this into the switch. So let's give it a try and see if they're lining up okay. So there's my grid, there's my box, and there's my sphere. So just to finish it out then, I want to try and use some slightly more complicated models. So we're going to use the pig. And the pig will be quite small again, so I'm going to scale it up to 20. I'll use a UV transform if I need to scale the UVs. I'll leave that at 1 by default. I can put down a match size. 
which for now at least I can leave to uh, default as well and that will just center it up a little bit better for me and then I can put down a transform if I need to move it around any more than that and I think I did need to move it up two units and I scaled it down to 0 0.6 so last one now is there's the test pig let's use the test head oh we can hook this guy up for the test head that comes in quite small so I'm going to put the uniform scale up to 150 and then that should be the last two so let's hook the two of these up to our switch node here we can test out the alignment yeah so they all roughly line up in the same spot and that should make our look dev a little bit more straightforward when we're over in Solaris now I like to be able to change from one model to the next without having to jump over and back so I am going to put in a little expression in here, which is $f, which is going to get me the frame number. And I'm going to set it to minus one because the switch starts from zero. So this branch here would be zero. And now if I use my right arrow or my left arrow, I can step through the models. And that can be quite handy when, again, when I'm over in the Solaris side. We can finish this out by just drawing down a normals node, which I will bypass for now but i might need it later on and i'll put a null down underneath this and the null is going to be called out all capital letters underscore sol for solaris so there is my test model setup if i want to go straight over to solaris now i have found myself using the solaris opengl viewport more and more but if you want to use the obj implementation of the opengl viewport you might also want to put down a labs quick material over here, which we could hook up over to the right hand side. You just need to be a little bit careful that you don't have this turned on um, when you're over in Solaris. You want this guy turned on down here. So that's the test model scene created. I want to turn that into a button now so I can reuse it in my other scenes. So I select the whole lot, drag and drop onto the shelf here. I'm going to call it test model. I'll give it the label T model here. That's the one that will appear on the actual shelf. If I click this little icon here and I go to H icon here, it brings me to where the icons for Houdini are stored. If I double click in here, I can scroll down through this list and I'm going to use this one here because it looks like some test models and I'll click accept and I can click accept here and there is my button. I'm going to delete all of these guys just to test it out. And boom, there you go. Well, now we have a test model set up that we can use for our Houdini designer textures uh, without having to rebuild this every single time. I hope you found this quick tip useful and I'll see you in the next video.